Good morning children. Today I am going to teach you Unit 1, Section 2 How I Taught My Grandmother to Read by Sudha Murthy. I am going to tell you something about the author Sudha Murthy. Sudha Murthy was born in 1950 in Chikau in North Karnataka. A prolific writer in Kannada, she has written several short stories. Her short stories deal with common lives and human values such as charity, kindness and self-realization. Before starting the lesson, I will give you a short summary of this lesson. In this lesson, the author recalls how she taught her grandmother to read. The author's grandmother had never gone to school as a young girl, but had a deep desire to study. As she grew older, she ensured that her children and later her grandchildren were educated. Her deep desire to read came alive when her granddaughter went to another village to attend a wedding and she was not able to follow one of the stories that her granddaughter used to read out to her from a magazine. This made her determined to learn to read, even though she was 62 years old. She asked her granddaughter to be her teacher and the author was amazed at the sincerity and dedication with which she applied herself to her studies. By this era, the grandmother had learned to read and on the day of Sarvasati Puja, she gifted her granddaughter material for a frock and touched her feet as a mark of respect for her young teacher. In return, the author gifted her grandmother her favorite story, Kashi Yatre, which had inspired her to learn to read and which had now been published as a novel. Okay children, we will go through the list. Just watch this. How I Taught My Grandmother to Read Written by Sudha Murthy When I was a girl of about 12, I used to stay in a village in North Karnataka with my grandparents. Those days, the transport system was not very good. So we used to get the morning newspaper only in the afternoon. The weekly magazine used to come one day late. All of us would wait eagerly for the bus, which used to come with the papers, weekly magazines and the post. At that time, Triveni was a very popular writer in the Kannada language. She was a wonderful writer. Her style was easy to read and very convincing. Her stories usually dealt with complex psychological problems in the lives of ordinary people and were always very entertaining. Unfortunately for Kannada literature, she died very young. Even now, after 40 years, people continue to appreciate her novels. One of her novels called Kashi Yatre was appearing as a serial in the Kannada weekly Karmavira Den. It is the story of an old lady and her ardent desire to go to Kashi or Varanasi. Most Hindus believe that going to Kashi and worshipping Lord Vishweshwara is the ultimate punya. This old lady also believed in this and her struggle to go there was described in that novel. In the story, there was also a young orphan girl who falls in love but there was no money for the wedding. In the end, the old lady gives away all her savings without going to Kashi. She says, The happiness of this orphan girl is more important than worshipping Lord Vishweshwara at Kashi. My grandmother, Krishtakka, never went to school, so she could not read. Every Wednesday, the magazine would come and I would read the next episode of this story to her. During that time, she would forget all her work and listen with the greatest concentration. Later, she could repeat the entire text by heart. My grandmother, too, never went to Kashi, and she identified herself with the novel's protagonist. 
So more than anybody else, she was the one most interested in knowing what happened next in the story and used to insist that I read the serial out to her. After hearing what happened next in Kashi Yatra, she would join her friends at the temple courtyard where we children would also gather to play hide and seek. She would discuss the latest episode with her friends. At that time, I never understood why there was so much of debate about the story. Once I went for a wedding with my cousins to the neighboring village. In those days, a wedding was a great event. We children enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. We would eat and play endlessly, savoring the freedom because all the elders were busy. I went for a couple of days, but ended up staying there for a week. When I came back to my village, I saw my grandmother in tears. I was surprised, for I had never seen her cry even in the most difficult situations. What had happened? I was worried. "Avva, is everything all right? Are you okay?" I used to call her "Avva," which means mother in the Kannada spoken in northern Karnataka. She nodded but did not reply. I did not understand and forgot about it. In the night after dinner, we were sleeping in the open terrace of the house. It was a summer night and there was a full moon. Avva came and sat next to me. Her affectionate hands touched my forehead. I realized she wanted to speak. I asked her, "What is the matter?" When I was a young girl, I lost my mother. There was nobody to look after. and guide me my father was a busy man and got married again in those days people never considered education essential for girls so i never went to school i got married very young and had children i became very busy later i had grandchildren and always felt so much happiness in cooking and feeding all of you at times i used to regret not going to school So I made sure that my children and grandchildren studied well. I could not understand why my 62-year-old grandmother was telling me a 12-year-old the story of her life in the middle of the night, but I knew I loved her immensely and there had to be some reason why she was talking to me. I looked at her face. It was unhappy and her eyes were filled with tears. She was a good-looking lady who was usually always smiling. Even today, I cannot forget the worried expression on her face. I leaned forward and held her hand. "Avva, don't cry. What is the matter? Can I help you in any way?" "Yes, I need your help. You know when you were away, Karma Veera came as usual. I opened the magazine. I saw the picture that accompanies the story of Kashi Yatra." and i could not understand anything that was written many times i rubbed my hands over the pages wishing they could understand what was written but i knew it was not possible if only i was educated enough i waited eagerly for you to return i felt you would come early and read for me i even thought of going to the village and asking you to read for me i could have asked somebody in this village but i was too embarrassed to do so i felt so very dependent and helpless we are well off but what use is money when i cannot be independent i did not know what to answer avva continued i have decided i want to learn the kannada alphabet from tomorrow onwards i will work very hard i will keep saraswati puja day during dashera as the deadline that day I should be able to read a novel on my own. I want to be independent. I saw the determination on her face. Yet I laughed at her. "Avva, at this age of 62, you want to learn the alphabet? All your hair is grey, your hands are wrinkled. You wear spectacles and you work so much in the kitchen." Childishly, I made fun of the old lady. But she just smiled. For a good cause, if you are determined, you can overcome any obstacle. I will work harder than anybody, but I will do it. For learning, there is no age bar. The next day onwards, I started my tuition. 
Avva was a wonderful student. The amount of homework she did was amazing. She would read, repeat, write and recite. I was her only teacher and she was my first student. Little did I know then that one day I would become a teacher in computer science and teach hundreds of students. The Dasara festival came as usual. Secretly I bought Kashi Yatra which had been published as a novel by that time. My grandmother called me to the puja place and made me sit down on a stool. She gave me a gift of a frock material. Then she did something unusual. She bent down and touched my feet. I was surprised and taken aback. Elders never touch the feet of youngsters. We have always touched the feet of God, elders and teachers. We consider that as a mark of respect. It is a great tradition, but today the reverse had happened. It was not correct. She said, "I am touching the feet of a teacher, not my granddaughter." a teacher who taught me so well with so much affection that i can read any novel confidently in such a short period now i am independent it is my duty to respect a teacher is it not written in our scriptures that a teacher should be respected irrespective of the gender and age i did return namaskara to her by touching her feet and gave my gift to my first student she opened it and read immediately the title kashi yatra by triveni and the publisher's name i knew then that my student had passed with flying colors